Ryan. That's a pie. All right, we're at Capital Casino buying for $500. This is probably the most interesting hand I played in a very long time. It all starts off with a bunch of limpers coming in and me being on the button with Jack 10 offsuit. Not a premium hand. This is not something I do every day, but here I decided to raise to 20 just to mix things up a little bit. If everybody folds, I'll be happy with the blinds. If they come along, I got position and I got a hand that does well against many players. So we're going to go six ways to a flop with 120 in it. And the flop comes out queen, three, deuce with two diamonds. Yeah, nothing for me here. I'm just going to wave the white flag and surrender. But it gets checked around and we see a king of spades on the turn. Now the person in the small blind leads out for $30. With two possible flush draws on the board, I don't think anyone would be betting uh, $30 with any hand that has any strength whatsoever. They should be making larger bets. So this is a sign of weakness. I expect that anyone with a strong hand would be raising here. Two pair or better would definitely want to put in a raise to protect their hand. But it seems like everyone's just calling the 30, which makes me think that they're all just drawing at something. So... Yeah, I can call 30 and take my pot odds and try to hit my hand. Or I can take control of the pot and put in a big raise here. And if a blank hits on the end, all those draws will miss. And I can take down the pot with some aggression. So I go ahead and I make it 180. It's a little bit of a risky play. But when you think your opponents are weak, you got to go with your read and uh, attack them. I was happy to see the first player fold out. The second player thought for a very long time and uh, he decided to put in the call. And when he does, I'm almost definitely sure he has a draw of some sort. I don't know whether it's a straight draw or some sort of flush draw. So I'm just putting him on either diamonds or spades or maybe some sort of weird straight draw. The next player also puts in the call and uh, we're going to see a turn card. So this is my plan. If a non-diamond or a non-spade hits the board, which will happen about half the time, I can represent my hand the way I'm representing it now and bet, and they would fold basically everything they have. If I hit an ace or a nine, great. I can bet and they might call me off, who knows. So I'm really looking for a blank to come on the river. And if so, I can go ahead and shove I think the biggest stack is maybe around $300, so I'm only risking $300. I should win this at least 50% of the time, maybe even higher if they both have the same flush draw. So I think it's a good play. We'll see how it works out. We see a river card, which is a three of hearts. Looks like an excellent card. All the draws miss. The board pairs the bottom. I'm a little concerned someone might have a king with a weak kicker and call me. But I think they both had draws, so I jam. First person folds, and this person snap calls and shows ace three of spades. The first player who folded out said he missed his draw. This player also kind of missed his draw. He had the flush draw, the nut flush draw, and made three threes on the end and uh, snapped me off. So if a spade came, yeah, I wasn't going to pay him off. If an ace came, I make the straight, he pays me off. The only card that gets him action is that three of spades that he can win with. Yeah. Anyway, got caught, but I really like the play. That's a really bossy play. I don't think I would ever make that play. Maybe it's because someone had me castrated.
five years ago. I'm still bitter about that. All right, I add $500 to my stack, and about half hour later, I get uh, ace 10 suited in the small blind. There is an $11 straddle on this hand, so I make it 30. The big blind calls a 30, and so does the straddler. So we're going three ways to this flop with $90 in the pot. Flop comes king high with two hearts. Yeah, not a great flop for our hand, but it's pretty good for our range, so I decided to C-bet this thing for $35. I get a pretty quick call from the player in the big blind. I figure the minimum he would have here is a flush draw. Most likely he has a king with maybe a mediocre kicker like a uh, king jack, king queen, maybe king 10. The other player puts in the call too, and we see a turn card of a three of spades with two people calling me, and one of them most likely has a king. I'm just going to go ahead and give up on this hand, so I go ahead and I check it. Player uh, in the big blind decides to make a bet for $50, and the straddler puts in a very quick call. I get a feeling that he has a very good hand and was trying to get an overcall for me because he has a short stack, so I get out of the way. River card comes as eight of diamond. He bets out a turn for $29. The other guy's like going, well, uh, okay, well, I don't think I can fold. I got king, queen here. And he, he makes a crying call for the 39, or I'm sorry, the $29. And the player with king, queen is rewarded with his call for the $29 with a slow roll. Hmm. It's been about an hour. I still haven't won a pot yet. Here I'm in the small blind. There's a $6 straddle, and there was three players that limp for the $6. And with ace-jack offsuit in the small blind, this is going to be played better as a raise, so I go ahead and make it 50. Hoping just to take down some chips, uh, break the ice. Anyway, I do get one player to fold, another player to fold, and then a short stack decides, well, he's just going to go with his hand. And he goes all in for $76, I believe. Oh, this will be a simple call if everyone else folds out. So after he puts his money in, I mentally prepared to take my chances with ace-jack against this player. And the uh, player on my right, who is the one that beat me out of that first big hand with the ace-three of spades, he has a very large stack, definitely has me covered by a whole bunch. He thought about this for a long time and put it in the 76. I'm not quite sure what he has. I would jam if I had the opportunity to, but uh, that 25 or $26 all in on top of my 50 does not reopen the betting. So the only thing I can do here is put in the call. We go to a flop that comes queen high and it has two clubs in it. I think he's more likely to have a hand like mine, ace jack, ace 10. So. I figure I'll just go ahead and see bet this, see if I can get him to fold something, maybe the same hand as mine. He does show that he had ace king and he folded. Turn card comes as a seven of clubs. River is a jack of hearts. I finally made a pair and the person showed pocket eight. So I got very lucky and made a pair on the end to take down my first pot of the day. There are two limpers in front of me. I look down at queen jack offsuit. I'm in the hijack, I got position on the two limpers. I decided to put in a raise to 20. End up getting call from the button, the small blind, and the two limpers. So we're gonna go five ways to this flop. And the flop comes out jack high. So pretty good flop for our hand. There are two spades out there and a possible straight draw with nine, 10. Maybe someone might have queen 10. When it's checked me, I decided to bet $40. The player in the button goes in the tank for probably about 30 or 40 seconds and finally puts out the call. Player in the small blind also likes his uh, hand, so he puts in the 40. The other player folds out, and the player to my right puts in the 40. So we're going to see a turn card, which is a three of diamonds. Pretty good card. It does put up a second flush draw, but uh, it really shouldn't hit anyone else. So I think my queen jack is the best right now. And when check two, I bet 115. Looking back on this, I think I need to go bigger with my bet sizing. I think 115 is a little bit small. The 
player on the button folds and the small blind makes the call and he has about 160 170 dollars left if he had me beat i think he would just go with it he could possibly have a jack with a better kicker maybe a king jack hand maybe even the ace jack hand being in the small blind river card comes as an eight of diamonds so the obvious uh, straight draw miss the obvious flush draw miss and he jams with two pair on the board I'm a little confused by this. I don't think he has an eight in this spot. Maybe he slow played a three, but would he go ahead and jam? If he made a flush, would he jam? It, it just really doesn't make sense. Unless he flopped a really big hand, I think it's more likely that he just missed his spade draw and is trying to buy it. Maybe he had a jack high flush draw and he has me out kicked. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't make sense and when it doesn't make sense i put in the call and he shows ace king of diamonds didn't think he would jam with that hand so i had a thousand to my stack and the very next hand i looked down at two kings in the low jack okay maybe it looks like i'm on total tilt and i'll get some action from this so i raised to 20 and i do get some action i have three other players coming along so we're going four ways to this flop which comes king high with a nine and a four beautiful flop it's checked to me i see bet for 25 dollars next player thinks for a moment puts in the call i'm loving it one player folds out and the player to my right calls turn card is a four diamonds and now the player to my right hesitates for a bit and then checks to me and i'm thinking Oh, please let him have a four. So he has a very deep stack. So do I. So I'm thinking, let's get it in. So I bet $80, hoping that he has a four. Player on my left decides to let it go. Player on my right folds. And I'm thinking, come on. About 15, 20 minutes later, I pick up uh, pocket queens in the low jack. There is a limper to my right. I raise to 20. I get a call from the cutoff for the 20. Everyone else folds back around to the limper, who also puts in the call. So we're going to go three ways to this flop with $64 in the center. So we get to see a flop of ace, queen, nine. Beautiful flop for my hand. My opponent to my right checks. I check because I was watching the, my opponent on the left, and it seems like he really enjoyed that flop. So I expect him to take the lead. And uh, after thinking for a while, he doesn't disappoint. He decides to bet out for $40. Needless to say, I'm gonna be raising this. I'm just trying to think of a good sizing that he would call and how we can maneuver our stacks into the center by the end of the hand. I figure if I make it about 125, he would definitely be calling. If he has anything strong, he would maybe consider raising. Anyway, he does consider raising, and he decides to go with all his chips, which is like a little over $1,000. I think he started the hand with like 1040 So, yeah, he just raised me $900 more on top of my bet, and I got second set. I don't think he has aces. Easy call. I put in the money. I'm thinking he has pocket nines at this point. Turn card comes as an eight of hearts, and the river is another queen, so I make quads. He shows that he had ace nine of hearts for top and bottom pair, and of course quads is better than that, so I'm going to win the pot. Dealer wanted to double check, make sure I had him covered, and I had him covered by like $100. So yeah, we just got, got even in one big pot. Biggest pot of the year for me. So $2,200 headed into our stack. Well, it's been about an hour and a half and I haven't done too much lately. So I decided to raise with ace queen offsuit from the uh, cutoff. Only get called by a strong player in the blind. Flop comes 10, seven, five with two hearts. Eh, not a great flop for my hand, but I, I decided to check it back when they checked to me. Turn cart is a five of hearts. Now the player leads for $20. Well, oh, I got the ace of hearts blocker and I got two over cards and I really don't want to fold because I haven't played too much. So I decided the best option would be a raise. Both of us are fairly deep and my raise here kind of looks super, super strong. I think they have a hand like maybe 
king 10, queen 10, something like that. They might even consider folding that. If they, they might be afraid to flush, I don't think they have a five in their hand. I think I'm probably up against a 10. Anyway, person thinks for a very long time. And since I haven't been very active, I think they gave me a lot of respect, which was I was hoping for. And they said they made a tight fold, which I'm glad. I won the pot and uh, I think it's time to head out. The game has definitely got tougher in the last hour or so. Thanks for watching, guys. I was uh, in for 2000 ended up getting out for 23.30, so I made $330 on the day, but what a wild day that was. That very first hand, I do like the play I made. I know some of you are saying it's a punt, but I like it. And if Zeus had balls, he would like it too. I got a little lucky with the ace-jack hand. I made, caught the jack on the very end to win my first pot of the day. Queen-jack, I didn't play very well. Definitely needed a bet larger on the turn on that hand. I think that uh, might have forced out that flush draw with two overs, but who knows, he might have come for whatever. Haven't played with him, didn't really know his style. Pocket queen's hand, yeah, that, that was the make or break of the whole session. Um, Guy love when you get action and get a nice flop like that. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or a like, uh, and maybe make a comment below. It does help out the channel grow. And until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.